Okay, today we're gonna make fish chowder. It's gonna be fish, we're gonna add some mussels in there, and we have potatoes, gotta have potatoes in a fish chowder, uh, corn, um, carrots for a little color and flavor, and uh, celery and onions. We're gonna cook that in a little bit of butter, and then we're going to uh, add some chicken stock to it and a little bit of milk. Now, New England clam chowder typically has, well, clams. Uh, we could add clams, I think. Um, I think we have some clams. We maybe, maybe we'll add some in. Um, but uh, it also is really uh, thick and hearty um, because it uses cream, heavy cream. Um, that's not how I roll, so we're gonna use milk instead and chicken stock's gonna be just as flavorful and a little lighter. Uh, so you gotta have potatoes. All, uh, all good chowder starts with a good potato. Really any potato will do. I've got Yukons here, peeled, ready to go. We'll dice those up. We'll put the onions in first, let that cook a little bit, and uh, then we'll add the other stuff and stock, and then the uh, the fish and the milk, and we'll, uh, we'll get it going. It's gonna be fabulous. All right, stay tuned. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut up some onion and get that going. So I'm gonna use half an onion. This is, this is a big onion, so I'll use half an onion. And uh, I got a nice sharp knife here that I just sharpened. Sharper the knife, ironically, the less chance you're going to cut yourself because um, usually you cut yourself when you put a knife on a vegetable and it slips because it's not sharp enough and you get a little bit of finger in there. Um, okay, so we're going to just dice it up. Nothing fancy. Onions uh, really add a lot of good flavor to a chowder, any soup really. Um, they, uh, you know, have that savory flavor. I prefer Vidalia onions or sweet onions um, over other types of onions, but really any, any will work. A yellow onion, a white onion, um, any kind of onion will work. Red onions typically are for salads or for sandwiches. Um, they're more mild, so I usually don't use red onions in a recipe, but you can, if that's all you got, that'll work too. All right, so we chopped up these onions and we're gonna throw them in. Okay, pan on, putting it up to about medium high. This is a Dutch oven. Dutch oven is a heavy um, piece of uh, cookware that's usually coated with an enamel surface. So it is um, really heavy duty and it's non-stick because of the enamel. You can see mine's been used for years and years. It's got, you know, um, little remnants of food past in there. Uh, it's all good though. Um, a good Dutch oven will last an awful long time because they really are indestructible because they're so heavily built and well-made. Good thing about a Dutch oven is you can use it on a stovetop. Great for making soups and stews. Um, you can also put it right into the oven. So if you remember the breads that I make, the uh, the bowls, I make those right in this Dutch oven. It goes right in the oven, so it works pretty well. Okay, so I've got the, the heat on, and I'm going to add some butter, maybe, uh, maybe a tablespoon or so to the pan, and we'll let that, uh, we'll let that cook up. Just a little bit, we'll let that soften, and uh, then we'll put our onions in. Okay, in with the onions. Our butter is nice and melted now. Onions are gonna go in. And then we'll just start to cook. And where there's onions, usually garlic follows. So, yep, got some frozen garlic that's going in. Recipe doesn't call for it, but uh, I like garlic, so it's going in. Don't let a recipe fool you into trying things that you don't like, right? If you like garlic, put the garlic in. If you don't like garlic, take it out. Okay, now while the onions are sauteing a little bit, we're going to start cutting up some other vegetables. Okay, so this recipe calls for potatoes. Got to have potatoes. Well, I've already peeled them. I'm just going to rinse them off a little bit here. So cut my potatoes in probably smaller pieces. You can cut them any size you'd like, but um, I'm gonna cut them 
probably about about like that. Those are good, good diced size. All right, stirring those onions up. Got that garlic in there. And they are sauteing in that melted butter, so it's giving it a good creamy sort of flavor. Usually I cook onions, or when I'm cooking, sauteing something, I usually cook it maybe in cooking spray or a little olive oil, and that's great. That works really well, but um, uh, a chowder is a creamy sort of dish, and I like the creaminess that the butter adds to it, so I usually cook that in butter. Uh, anything will work, really, but uh, butter adds a really good flavor. Okay, well, the onions are cooking. We're gonna chop up some carrots. Now, depending on the recipe and what you're making, you can either cut carrots, well, really, any, any vegetable you're cutting. You can either cut them thick or thin uh, for something like a pot roast or, a, or a, uh, maybe a beef stew. I like them nice and, nice and thick. But for a soup or a chowder, I'm going to cut them on the smaller side. So you can see I cut them lengthwise, which is tricky because they're round shaped, so they tend to uh, wiggle around under the knife. It's real easy to cut yourself that way. Just be careful. Um, and then I'm going to cut them into smaller chunks like this. And then that way they'll cook up uh, a little quicker. That's the first part. But you don't want, this isn't a carrot dish, right? This is a, a fish soup. The star should be the fish and the potatoes. Uh, not the not the carrots. Carrots play a supporting role here. I'm all for carrots playing the starring role, but not in this dish. All right, so we're going to chop them up. And while we're at it, I'm going to chop up the celery. And yeah, what the heck, I'll chop up one more, one more carrot. See how I'm cutting it lengthwise here. And then, now these carrots have been peeled. I peeled the carrots first. Um, typically I peel carrots. I guess you don't have to, but it takes that, uh, that sort of uh, rind off the outside. I peeled my potatoes too. You don't have to. You can, uh, you can have potatoes that aren't peeled. It's just that they, uh, sometimes uh, are dirty, so you gotta scrub them and wash them really well. I find it's just as easy to peel them, so. Okay, carrots, celery going in. Okay, into the carrots and celery. Trying not to make a mess, but not doing too good though. Okay, carrots and celery go in. Now, that butter is still in there, although it's mostly been cooked up, so. Before things start to burn, we're going to just cook these a little bit, and then we're going to add our broth and uh, and some spices, and then just let it simmer and cook for a while. Oh, got to add potatoes. Potatoes. This is four potatoes. I actually took five of them out to cut up and put in, but I think four is going to be enough. That's two carrots, two stalks of celery. That's three carrots, two stalks of celery, and four good-sized potatoes. Yep, that looks about right. And then with the um, with the fish, I'm going to add. It's about it's about two thirds of a pound of fish, and then uh, I'm going to add some mussels in there too. So okay, this stuff's cooking away. It smells great. We're going to add some broth, some chicken broth. And I'm going to do a little something different. You can buy broth in, uh, in the store, just chicken broth. Um, you can also use chicken bouillon, that works, and just add it to water. I'm going to add four cups, so here's two of water. That's one. And that's two two cup containers of water. So that's four cups of water. And I've been using this stuff called Better Than Bullion. And my opinion, it is better than bullion. So the way you use it is, uh, 
It's just like a teaspoon. It's like a goopy, really rich uh, chicken flavor. Um, a teaspoon per cup of water. So I just put in four cups. So I'm gonna use about four teaspoons of this stuff, but who the heck knows? I'm not measuring it, I'm just guessing. A little more is better than less because this stuff's really good. It adds a really deep, complex flavor to the, to the food. Okay, so better than bullion is going in. You can use whatever. You can use regular bullion. You can use uh, chicken broth. You can also use um, clam juice, um, really any liquid. So um, I like chicken because it's, uh, it tends to be really flavorful. A little salty too, which is good because this is a dish that demands a little bit of salt. So I'm gonna add, add salt to it. Now with soups, I like to adjust, I add, add salt and pepper, but I wait till the end to adjust because um, you don't wanna add too much salt at first. You don't want to add too little salt at the end either. You want it to be, um, salt really brings out flavor uh, in a dish like a soup. So um, it's an important ingredient. And if you add too much uh, on the front end, then it's really hard to take away. Um, and if you don't add enough on the front end, no, no problem, you can do it on the back end. So you can see, this is what we've got so far. You can see that water has turned into a nice chickeny brothy sort of thing. That those onions have cooked up really nice, that garlic has cooked up, the celery and the carrots and the potatoes have just started to cook. So they um, are gonna sit in there and they're gonna boil. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the cover back on it and it's gonna uh, heat up quicker that way. And we're gonna keep it on medium high heat and just let it come to boil. One thing I forgot to add was uh, thyme, um, salt, pepper, time uh, is a good thing to add. So rule of thumb is, um, this is a dried herb, obviously. Uh, if you have fresh herbs, those are great. Uh, like we have fresh rosemary, I may add a little bit of, of that into it. Um, but dried herbs are about three or five times more potent than an than a equal amount of fresh herbs. So what that means is, um, because the fresh herbs have a lot of water in them, uh, when they dry out, uh, the flavor is more intense. So if you add fresh herbs, you don't need to add as, you add, need to add more than if you added um, dehydrated herbs, which is this. So I'm gonna add a sprinkle of thyme. We'll give it a good shake. Thyme's a nice uh, soft flavor. It's not too, not too pronounced or too harsh. Some spices are heavier than others. Thyme's a pretty light touch. Okay. Okay, so while that's cooking, I got some cod here. Uh, Alaska cod from Trader Joe's. It was frozen. So I took it out of the freezer yesterday and put it into the refrigerator. And let's just chop it up and we're going to add it in at the end. Now the thing about cod or any sort of white fish, um, it cooks pretty quickly. Quicker than you think. Um, you really only need to put it in a boiling soup for you know a few minutes and it will cook. See how thick that is? It's got a thick end and a thin end. So I want these pieces to sort of hold up. So I'm gonna cut them fairly big. Um, cod and haddock, another white fish, which would be good in this. They have a great flavor. They're light, um, not very overpowering. They're good in this kind of uh, stew. They're not a very expensive fish, so um, you can uh, buy lots of it at the store and make a nice soup out of it. But they fall apart in a stew or a soup. So I'm gonna cut them as thick as I can like that. Um, even that's still gonna fall apart. So um, it becomes more of a fish flavor rather than big chunks of fish, but that's okay. Um, this was again about three, two thirds of one pound. Uh, so I, I would add you know, I'd, I'd have at least a pound of, of fish in there. And again, you can use any kind of fish. Um, uh, this is cod, but haddock works. It's another white fish, salmon. Uh, you can use shrimp. You can use clams, canned clams, um, or fresh clams, I suppose. Um, I have mussels. I'm gonna add some mussels. These are frozen that I took out of the freezer just now, so they're still a little frozen. They're already pre-cooked, so I'm just gonna put them in when I add the fish in at the end. And, uh, and all I need to do is heat through. It won't take long. Another thing I like to do is while I'm making 
a, a recipe, I'm cleaning up after myself as I go. That way you don't have a huge mess at the end that seems overwhelming. You only have a little mess at the end because you've taken care of all the other messes as you go. Okay, we got some boiling stew here. Just came to a boil, so I'm gonna put the lid on it. I'm gonna turn the heat down a little bit, and I'm gonna set the timer for 10 minutes. Okay, timer just went off. It's been 10 minutes since it's been boiling. Let's check in on it. Looking good. Let's test one of the bigger hunks of potato here. Let's see how we're doing. Okay. Mm. Done. Okay. It doesn't have to be cooked totally all the way through because we're still going to have the fish and stuff still going to cook for a while. Um, but uh, that's right where you want it to be. It's just uh, just um, tender and sort of falls apart in your mouth. It's perfect. Okay, so now we've got boiling soup that right now is just potato, onion, and carrot soup and celery and chicken. And to it, we will add the fish. So the fish that we chopped up going in. I'm also going to put in the mussels. There we go. And I'm going to add a cup of milk. That's going to go in. And oh yeah, baby. Now that's that fish is just gonna sit in this hot broth and cook. Just gonna sit there and cook. We're gonna let it sit for a little while, turn the heat back up a bit. And what we wanna do now is sort of look and see what's our consistency. Do we have too much vegetables and not enough broth? Do we have too much broth and not enough vegetables? And we want to sort of take a look. Now I like a nice chunky soup, but not everybody does. So I like to have a lot of vegetables in there. But we've got a lot in here, maybe too much. Maybe we need to add a little bit more broth. So that's easy to fix, no problem. I'm just gonna add water. A little at a time, water or milk. Um, it's about a, maybe a half a cup of water right there. And we'll just let it cook in with the rest of it. Now, if I were adding a lot more water, I would add more, more chicken broth, that bullion stuff. Oh, that's got a great flavor. Now, now it really starts to taste like a chowder. It's got a good uh, fishy sort of flavor in there. Okay, now, one thing I'm gonna add that the recipe doesn't call for, but I'm gonna add it anyway. This is rosemary. This is a sprig of rosemary that I got from our rosemary plant. Uh, in the summertime, we grow it in the garden. In the wintertime, we put it in the sunroom. Uh, so I just pinched a little uh, bit off the end. And rosemary, is a stronger uh, flavor uh, than say thyme or some other uh, fresh herbs, but it's a really good flavor. It is very complimentary to soups, stews, meats, any pot roast I've ever made, um, I add rosemary to. Any beef stew I've ever made, I add rosemary to. Um, any pea soup I've ever made um, has rosemary, it's delicious. Uh, a lot of recipes don't really call for it, but I think it adds a really nice uh, flavor to soups and stews and meats. Uh, two fun stories about rosemary. Uh, it doesn't grow natively here uh, in Vermont. It's, uh, it's a warmer climate plant, but it grows wild in uh, like Southern California and Southern Europe. Um, it grows all over the countryside uh, and it's a big, big plant. It's a bush like our uh, it can grow like four or five feet tall, like bigger than our blueberries. Um, and back in ancient times, the ancient mariners, the Greeks and the Romans, uh, who would go off to war and would go off to explore new lands and be at sea for months at a time, um, knew they were coming home and getting close to land when they could smell the rosemary. That's how strong it is and that's how much it, um, it grew out there. And the other thing about rosemary that's kind of cool is that during the Dark Ages, uh, during the Black Plague, people thought that rosemary uh, could prevent uh, the Black Plague. So they would actually burn it like incense. 
um, they take it and sprigs of it and burn it and then walk around their homes with it uh, and keep it with them, uh, thinking that would make the Black Plague go away. Didn't really work, but I bet their home smelled nice. Uh, okay, so now we're just gonna let this thing cook. Uh, that fish is gonna cook right in the broth. And one thing about fish is it's easy to overcook, so we're gonna keep our eye on it. And you can tell that's a nice hunk of cod right there that's already done. It's uh, falling apart. You can tell white fish is done because it just falls apart like that. Yep, delicious. Okay, so now I'm thinking maybe this is a little too brothy. Maybe I shouldn't have added that extra half cup of water. So no problem. If it's too brothy, we're just going to boil it down a little bit and thicken up. We can also add um, cornstarch to it, which I think I will do because that thickens the broth up. It doesn't add more broth or less broth, but it thickens up the broth you have. So let's do that. Now, the secret of good cornstarching is knowing when not to cornstarch. No. So you take some broth, and you put it in a bowl. And to this bowl of broth, we're going to add some cornstarch. So this is cornstarch. It comes in a variety of containers, but I'm going to just sprinkle a little bit in. Not a lot. A little goes a long way with cornstarch. And then here's the real important part. I'm going to get a wire whisk and I'm going to whisk the heck out of it. Now, if you don't have a wire whisk, you can use a fork, I guess, but um, it's really important you really whisk it well and make sure it's fully dissolved and incorporated into this. Because the thing about cornstarch is A, a little goes a long way, but B, if you don't stir it up well enough, it gets clumpy and um, then it, that clumpiness sort of transfers into the soup itself and you get spoonfuls of bleh, like bleh, clumpy cornstarch, which doesn't taste bad. It just doesn't, you know, just doesn't fit in with the soup. So you wanna make sure you stir it nice like that. That's pretty good. And then I'm gonna just pour it right back in. Right back into that. And what that does is it thickens it so it becomes less watery and a little more thick like a chowder. So it takes a little while. You sort of let it let it heat up and let it cook in there and then it's going to thicken that broth. You can already tell it's thickened up a bit. Not a lot, but it's thickened up a bit. Now I want mine a little bit thicker than this because I think chowder should be a thicker thing rather than a soup. Soup is a thinner broth. Chowder is a thicker broth. So I'm going to do this again. And then add a little bit more cornstarch. Remember, a little goes a long way. You need maybe a, what's that? Maybe a maybe a tablespoon, or maybe a, start with a teaspoon and see what you get. And okay, I'm gonna mix it all in. And you can ju just keep doing this until you get the thickness that you that you want. Um, don't don't do too much too soon because then it's harder to make it less thick. You could add more water and whatnot. So, all right, so here we go. Now, as I'm doing this, that soup's continuing to cook. Yeah, this is nice and thick now and good and dissolved. So in it goes. And then we stir it. Yeah, and we let that thicken up real nice. Now, this smell is incredible. It's fishy. It's oniony, it's savory. Smell those spices in there, that rosemary and that thyme, those herbs. The garlic is coming out, the onion smells great, and the fish smells really delicious in here. So we've got a lovely soup, lovely chowder that's now thickening up nice. And I think we're getting ready to eat dinner. Oh yeah, buddy, oh yeah. Often it's all about the accompaniments. I made fresh baguettes today, so let's uh, have some yumminess to go along with it. Oh yeah. Okay, the time has come for us to plate our <laughs> fabulous meal. Mm. Oh yeah, okay. 
So we get our fancy bowl. And we make it extra fancy by putting a piece of parsley on it. That shows the world <laughs> that you're fancy. Okay. Make sure you get enough muscles in there. Do you want it chunkier or less chunky? So there's lots of chunks in here. I like it, just like this. Okay. So there you have it. Fish chowder. Yay! Mom's pleased. Dad's <laughs> pleased. Let's try it out. Imagine my surprise when we sit down to a fabulous meal and mom says, where's the corn? <laughs> there Forgot it is. Forgot to add the corn. Turn it. All right. So, soup's going back in. Corn is going in. Can of corn. Oh, you didn't. Liquid and all. Okay. And we're just going to. Let it heat up again through the miracle of time-lapse. <laughs> It'll be as if nothing happened. 